Yeah, whoever. Which was all probably made from molds, but still whoever made the molds did a hell of a job. Well, well, doorway of the Cahokia Mounds Museum. Mole Rockin may not want his face shown, so there's his his feet, but we're hanging out today, so we went down to Merrimack yesterday, found a bunch of fossils. Welcome to the Mounds, first visit for you? Me, me it is. You're going to get your own personal guide then, right? Yeah, <laughs> I live in the area. He's a little further okay. west. How long since you've been here? Oh, it's been a few years. Okay, well, one exhibit that wasn't here before that would be the right around the corner, the dugout canoe. Yeah, my wife was talking about that. Yeah, okay, so that's that's good, and there's a nice water scene that goes with it. So, nice. so uh, in a little while, you'll hear the announcement for the orientation film as well. And you can get to that up the street. All right. Trail maps right here. If you want to be outside, there's a trail that begins at the double door. All right. Thanks, sir. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he knows that trail pretty good. <laughs> to have it. But. Lighting's not very good. The Birdman tablet was found in the Monk's Mound area and dates to AD 1300. The front of the sandstone tablet is of a man with a bird mask and winged costume in a dance pose. Common bird man, symbolism of the Mississippian culture. The striking image has been adapted by the Cahokia Mounds logo. Spring flood on the Santos River in Arkansas. Matt Guth and friends discovered this dugout canoe on a sandbar. They dug it out, transported it to Guth's house, and kept it wet and covered to help preserve it. Guth contacted various authorities in Arkansas to see if they were interested in purchasing and displaying it. Jeff Mitchum from the nearby Parkin Mound site in Arkansas examined documented the canoe, which is made of bald cypress and removed from a piece near the bow, carbon dating from 14. Carbon dating 14, the results came back showing the canoe dated AD 1300 to 7 to 600 years old. And then that Probably a bunch of Arkansas stone. That's with a couple of rivers down there. Real nice, pretty round looking rocks all come out of it. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe the St. Francis River, where they said it was out of. That thing's long. Constructed of 25 foot long. Oh, the case is that long. So if the case is that long, the boat's probably like 23. That's pretty cool, huh? Here's an interesting fact. Based on the tool marks and charming visible on both interior and exterior exterior surfaces, the method of the manufacturer can be reconstructed the same. They use stone axes and adds, adds right there, to do much of the shaping to form the interior. They use the combination of burning and scraping. 
Small controlled fires would be burned along the surface to char the wood. They used chert, flint, adzes, one to one and a half inches long, which eh, they probably had some bigger ones too. Inches wide to chip away the charred areas. This process was repeated until they achieved the proper depth and width. That's why when we find all them ads, they have such a heavy polish on them. Because they were definitely a woodworking tool. Interesting features. Charring near the bow would result of a burning getting out of control, either from charring process or burning fires in the canoe for night fishing. The protruding rock near the stem. Stern may have been too difficult to remove, but also could have served as a purpose for a foot brace for a person standing in the stern, using a pole or canoe in shallow water to maneuver it around. Yeah, that's what I'd have used it for. And all I got over here. Big old Ramy knife. Some marine shell beads. Shell tempered. Pottery, ceramic vessels, typically tempered with crushed mussel shell. And right there has got the circle of life on it. Nice little Cahokia points. M2, two, three translucent ones. Some discoidals. Look at that beautiful notch toe. Big old spade. Bunch of polish on it. Artifacts in here. Got big old Schneiders. On loan there. So a lot of the artifacts in here, a lot of me notice will say replica on it. Like this. On the atlatl and spear thrower there, it calls it, but it's your atlatl or your dart, and your dart says, where is that? It says replica. Now the other artifacts in here say that. So that's what I like to see. A museum that constantly shows real artifacts. like the Cahokia Mounds, they had so many different materials found from so many different places here. That proves it was a major trading hub because they had obsidian that came from Yellowstone. They had conch shell that came from the Gulf Coast. And they had some Pennsylvania material found here. I believe some Tex other Texas material, of course, which are Gulf Coast material some nice plummets and archaic so not necessarily from the mound but all real artifacts like check out this big atley that dude's a monster some nice daltons beautiful grand cave that plain view over there. I was second guessing it for being real when I first came over and looked at him. There's your paleo toolkit. Right there.
different bird stones or boat stones some banner stones copper axe Big old knife there, but killer. Look at this Snyder's point. Mm. And over here is a stone gorget with some engraving in it. Like ceiling or thin pots are from here. There's all this copper, a lot of stuff found here. Some galena. It's a cast of the actual original founder. The bigger figurine, they call it. And there's a shell hole. Because they were such a corn cultivating culture. Yurkin squash. Another dugout canoe down here. And then this says replica, or the frog effigy pipe is a cast. So it's a cast from the very original artifact found here. And the gorget was something found here. Let everything he can harvest off a river in there. The they 
sure loved eating the mussel shells. We know that in Missouri. It's the monk's mound. That's Georgia, Egypt, Yucatan, Mexico. But you have the base of the Monk's Mound. This is the largest structure ever built like any of those other ones around the world. Nice coke is in there. Looks like those bottom two are bone and that center one was bone and that one there is bone. It's fish hooks. The beaver effigy bowl is the cast. How would you like to dig something like that out? Mm -hmm. Woodhenge. So the X marks on the posts would look like those on the original posts. The center post pit was dug with replica short handled pose, and the dirt was removed in baskets. The post was raised by hand and with ropes, similar to the way the original center post could have been set. At the equinoxes and solstices, the sun rises over the marked posts when they are lined up with the center post. Now, we can see the rising sun through seasonal changes, just as the Cahokians did. Cahokia Mounds is a group of Yeah, a giant calendar. The polish on that little one. Major shiny. See, I wonder if that they dug up, you know? There's something you don't find much in Missouri is a pedestal. Life. Got a fish trap. Getting some fish out. A little bit of snow. Gathering firewood. Brush. Cleaning the deer. Shell hose. Trev MMA or Trev and Shane and, and Bevel Blade dug a bunch of them out of a site in Ohio. I have one. Thank you, Bevel Blade. Digging stick. That monster hole back here. And all that vessel there has been all glued back together. And that's a monster. I mean, it's 
two foot diameter easy. That's pretty cool. There's something else I'd like to find is a discoidal. That one in that center, that's some pretty cool material, whatever it is. shell hooks and pendants and teeth beads, shell beads, copper beads. And the chief of the mounds. Normally how they were buried. How they found them buried. Some pretty nice points with him. Well, on the, didn't they find the one guy with a bunch of points? Ain't that the one picture online where it's like 200 points or something? And it'd just take me all day to read all that stuff. And say dates from around 1200 AD 50 sandstone tablet fragment was found in the 19th century on the Ramey farm just east of the monks found it was decorated with common war symbols of southeastern ceremonial complex Pleated woodpeckers and human heads with beaded forelocks, hair buns, and ear spools. There's so much I'll probably edit out, you know what I mean? Break it down to 15 minutes, you take a lot of editing out. Pearson X Ed Cash, as seen here, was discovered in 1975 by Delmont Pearson in one of his fields after it was being plowed. Man, could you imagine plowing your field and finding that in a swipe? Imagine how heavy that thing is. Could be like the biggest guy in the clan to be swinging them around. Or by the time you were swinging it for years, you were the biggest guy in the clan. <laughs>
somebody always said, be busy. Nap, nap, nap. The Grossman X said cash. Look at that. All different sizes in there. Look at this, this largest one. What's it say at 18 inches long, six inches wide, it weighs 28 pounds. Although it is unfinished, its massive size could indicate it was a ritualistic piece. Check out that speckled material. There's a couple others like that, but not as pretty as them two. Cluster nine, four finished axes with their square or rounded poles. Man. What I would give to run into something like that at the hall. <laughs> I can't name at the moment. <laughs>